Hi all, thank you again to Oisev Onos, an absolute Lasker fanatic, pushing me to do Lasker games. So here is a game of Lasker against Frank Marshall with White from the 1914 St. Petersburg tournament. So this tournament really, Lasker played phenomenally well. This is in round 10. Let's have a look what happened. So E4 from Lasker, we have Frank James Marshall playing E5. We have knight f3, and now knight f6, Petrov's defence, rather dull, isn't it, usually? Lasker plays knight takes e5, we have d6, knight f3, knight takes e4. Thankfully, modern grandmasters have found a way to spice things up here with the move knight c3. This wasn't played in this particular game. For example, after knight takes d takes, accepting double pawns, white can play to castle queenside. Uh, so that's a, a very modern dynamic treatment to the position. Lasker played queen e2 here. We have queen e7, d3. And uh, in this position, actually, uh, the move knight c3 has been seen in Kramnik against Caruana, Berlin 2018, which ended in a win uh, for Caruana. The queens did actually come off there a bit dull and Caruana managed to win that game. So here um, we see d3, though, in this particular game, knight f6. And now uh, Lasker maintains the tension of the possession. He doesn't exchange off the queens, which you might think is an interesting decision against such an attacking player who loves the middle game. You might think Lasker would be keen to take the queens off, but he didn't. And in fact, it's a bit of a tease, because actually Frank Marshall played bishop e6, not going for the queen exchange here. Uh, that's a kind of interesting decision in its own right. Uh, instead of bishop g5, by the way, here, knight c3, black did take the queen in the very high-level game, Magnus Carlsen against Caruana in the 2011 uh, Week and Z, sorry, in the 2018 Week, week and Z tournament. Uh, in that game, uh, Caruana drew with the black pieces. It was pretty solid there. So anyway... Uh, so bishop g5 was Lasker's choice, and, and knight c3 was Magnus Carlsen's choice there. We have bishop e6, and now knight c3. We have knight bd7, and Lasker does castle queenside, like a lot of modern grandmasters would end up doing in that variation with the double pawns, but here he hasn't got double pawns. We have h6. He does play bishop h4, which does encourage black to win the dark square bishop with this forcing move g5 and then knight h5. So uh, there's an issue with da this dark square bishop and double pawns on this side of the board. Lasker doesn't seem to worry too much about that and accepts that and plays d4. We have knight takes, h takes, capturing towards the center. Seems very sensible. g4, knight h4. A knight on the rim is dim, or is it here? We have d5, queen b5, and now uh, Frank Marshall sets what seems to be a very uh, sensible move, but isn't the d5 pawn hanging? Very, very interesting. Uh, so he castles queenside, protecting b7. If he had played b6, then queen c6, uh, for example, this position, it, it's actually plausible to play knight takes d5 here, because after bishop takes, queen takes, queen g5 check, Queen takes, h takes, although there's a nasty pin there on this unprotected rook, can you see what white can play in this position to save him or herself? White to play here, if I give you 10 seconds to pause the video, what tactical resource could you use in this position? Okay. Knight g6, yes, encourage rook takes because there's rook e1 check, you're covering the escape squares of the king. Uh, well, and you're putting pressure on e7. So if black has to give up a piece, now uh, there is bishop b5 check, and this is all running with check, and you can win the uh, rook eventually on h1 as an example. So yeah, uh, b6, because of queen c6, this is uh, very, very bad indeed. Uh, so anyway, black castles, and you might think, well, hold on, what about here? The king's safe, isn't it? It's not in the centre, so why why can't knight takes d5 being played, be played here? Um, well, bishop takes, queen takes, black has queen g5 check, 
And of course, there's no, of the queen takes g5, h takes. This is just a very nasty pin without any saving resource. Um, so yeah, that makes all the difference actually. So that is a trap which needed to be avoided. Uh, black would be clearly winning there. So um, instead, um, after castling, instead of taking the pawn on d5, Lasker plays queen a5. Very nice move, very strong. And we can see here that actually with queen a5, it vacates the b5 square. So if king b8, there's a move like knight b5. Uh, just to put this on the board. And black can't really easily defend a7 and c7 that easily. So in fact, uh, this is already a very dangerous moment for black. Probably the lesser evil move. We talk about lesser evil moves uh, when there's a mixture of bad choices just to make the least bad choice. It might actually be c6 might actually be the least bad choice just to give Lasker a pawn but uh, fight for another day maybe for example like this the king uh, seems fairly safe and black can fight on a little bit it's a game there but a pawn down but in this particular game we have um, after queen a5 we have a6 and this does kind of tempt a bishop sack when you see a pawn like that it is rather tempting to snap off such a pawn and hope for the best or try and calculate it if it's a longer game uh, than blitz chess but usually when I see such a pawn well, it's very tempting to take that and in fact um, did Lasker take it or not he did actually here so bishop takes so it's two pawns for a bishop so what's the point here knight b5 the immediate threat queen a7 check and then queen c7 checkmate for example black parries with knight b6 protecting the c7 pawn uh, if we look at the mixture of defenses available if rook c8 then there's queen a7 checkmate if knight f6 then rook d3 is strong for example here rook a3 threatening queen a8 checkmate and if that's the best that's not very good for black if bishop g7 just to see the threats in action queen takes there so okay not too many options so knight b6 was played we have rook d3 a fantastic rook left Yes, this is really, it's like Lasker is adopting Marshall's attacking style of play against Marshall. What a wind-up is this. Marshall must have been outraged at this point, disgusted. His opponent is is whipping up a very, very dangerous attack. We have Queen G5 check being played. Uh, just to put some scenarios on the board here, instead of Queen G5, if Bishop G7, then check... And then rook c3, a focal point, that c7 focal point. If knight c4, b3. This variation, we're just uh, winning material. If uh, knight c4 here, instead of bishop g7, more sensible. This is very, very dangerous. And even if this happens, uh, the attack is very, very strong with the queen and knight here and the potential to use c1. In fact, white can try and use c1. Can you guess what white can play here? even in this position. If I give you 10 seconds to pause the video, white's play here, what would you play? Okay, you can disconnect the queen. That's a clue. <laughs> a few more seconds. You can disconnect the queen from c1 with f4, and even after the ampersand, knight takes hitting the queen. If the queen tries to stay on the diagonal, rook e1 will nudge the queen away from that diagonal now. Uh, so, for example, queen d3, we finally get to play rook c1. And it's pretty terminal, this position for black. Once that focal point is set up on c7, it's lethal. It's absolutely lethal. As example, rook d7 check and checkmate uh, is one example. Uh, so, yeah, it's there's nothing really uh, for black to do here. Bishop c8, queen a7. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we have actually, uh, after rook d3 uh, being played, so queen g5 check, king b1, and now we have bishop d6. 
So how to play this attack? It's interesting. I'd like to refer to you back to Nimzovich, my system. He actually described pins as not just a tactical element, but a kind of positional element in that pins often offer the form of restraint, which is a kind of form of prophylaxis, putting your position in a secure state. If you can pin the opponent's pieces, you're reducing their potential counterplay. And Lasker's intuition and calculation combined, obviously, resulted in him playing a kind of pinning move, rook b3, which is really fantastic here. Very, very calm. A piece down, do a kind of pinning move, restrict the opponent's counterplay and movements, potentially pinning that knight now. We have rook he8. There's very little, little black can do here, but wait. And now there's a free pawn to push, a4. Yeah, it's, it's horrific, isn't it? Uh, if ever the bishop goes back to c8, it, it uses up an escape square. So there'd be, you know, queen a7, chatmate. I uh, can't really kick this queen out that easily. We have bishop f5 being played. And this kind of, well, it, it means now knight a7 uh, is encouraging the bishop to go back because of the knight c6 chatmate. So the bishop just goes back. Uh, and now we have a5 using that pin starting to win material queen d2 as if there's a some sort of something to worry about a takes his plate rookie one check and in fact it's it's not really anything to worry about even if Lasker took here um, if rookie one's not played if c5 actually there's a very very strong idea here a tactical move here for those interested what can white play, which is very, very strong tactically in this position? If I give you 10 seconds to pause the video here, what would you play with white? Knowing that the bishop, this is a clue, is a guardian of the c6 square. So what does that afford in this position? Okay. There's knight f5, actually. This is a real crusher. So if it takes, there's knight c6, checkmate. Otherwise, you know, bishop c8, then you're knight c6. If bishop f4, that's just totally ridiculous. Just take that. So it'll be an end of game after knight f5 there anyway. So this is a rather miserable scenario. Rookie one check was played. Now, Alaska played king a2. Uh, he could play rook takes and here. And there's really, it's really hopeless again, why it can actually make use of this offside knight with knight f5 if needed, just to bring more pressure to bear. Uh, for example here then rook a3 and this is just totally hopeless for black these scenarios where this battery and the coverage of escape squares with both knights holding each other and that one controlling c8 it's it's horrible it's going to be uh, a disaster like that for example so anyway king a2 was played letting uh, this rook go if needed um, so we have c6 if the rook is taken as you'd expect, there's a, a quick execution. B takes C7, double check. And Rook B7 is actually checkmate there. So C6. And guess what uh, Emmanuel Lasker plays in this position? If I give you 10 seconds to pause the video. Okay. A sweet move. Knight b5. Yep, yeah, knight b5. C takes is played. If uh, here, if rook takes h1 here, then check. And knight takes d6 is checkmate. So the knight's eliminated. And uh, here now, queen a7 check, and the game ended. Frank Marshall resigned here. Not a moment too soon. If he plays king c8, then quickest is uh, check and queen a6 checkmate. That's the quickest mate. And there's also another mate available just with pushing the pawn and then queening double check and then queen takes b5 checkmate. So the game ended here. Accuracy, you might ask. Accuracy assessment. Emmanuel Lasker, one inaccuracy, zero mistakes, zero blunders, average 13. 13 average center pawn loss that's amazing frank marshall four inaccuracies two mistakes zero blunders 47 average center pawn loss in fact 
Tarash in the tournament book said of this particular game, it seems, that uh, Lasker had demanded an extra honorium, honorium to play in this tournament. Judging by games like this, it was money well spent. <laughs> so uh, Tarash, whose uh, personal relations with his great rival were cool, always praised his, always praised his play. And um, Alaska was never to play better than in the St. Petersburg finals. So this is a really, really a classic game from a classic tournament of Alaska. I hope you got something from it. And it showed he can kind of imitate the opponent's style. That must be a wind-up, surely, to imitate if the opponent really prides himself on attacking play. That Alaska's played like a, a dashing attacking player here in this particular game. Hope you enjoyed it. Got something from it. If you want to challenge me for a game, Kings Crusher TV or bit.ly slash chess mold. There's a Discord forum, chat forum. You want to check out Kings Crusher TV slash Discord. Okay. Thanks very much. Comments, questions, likes, subscribes, all appreciated. Thanks again.